Welcome everyone to episode 10 the of Elbows Tight Podcast. It's your main man, Travis, sitting here with, with John, the good man, in his backyard once again. John, how you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. That's good, man. And we got a we got a, a fun day full of epic conversation with ourselves. And a couple good beers. And some really good beers, actually. Mm-hmm. So before we get on any further, John, what we got today? So I got um the Men's Room Original Red. Uh, first time I've had that one. It's pretty good. I like it. It's yep. nice amber. Tastes good. This is your first time having? Yeah, I've never had this. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, this is like literally one of my favorite beers. And what is that again? Elysian? Is that uh, Elysian. Elysian. Yeah. Elysian. So they're a local brewery over in Seattle. Mm. And my old office that I worked at in Seattle was down the literally walking distance. Oh, really? Of their brewery. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. I like ambers. Yeah, I really it's, like it a lot, yeah, too. It's good. Yeah. What do you have over there in that awesome-looking can? Dude, this can is, like, so legit. This is uh, G-Love's IPA Special Sauce, The Juice. This is a 6.8% by volume of alcohol. It's a little 12-ounce can. Once again, these are going to be on the Instagram, so if you guys don't follow us on Instagram already, it is at Elbows Tight Pod, and that's where we post all the pictures of our episodes, what beers and alcohol we're drinking on that episode. So if you guys ever want to try some of these, this w- these are on our, our Instagram page, so make sure you guys follow them. And on the side of this one, it says OG15P. <laughs> no idea what that means, but IBUs are 50, so it's not super hoppy. Let me take a drink real quick. Let me, let me that one, the one you have is a percent higher than, than the red over here. Well, that's good, man. So, like, when when I pick my IPAs, I don't know how you do it, John. Are, are you a big IPA drinker? You know, I, I've not been historically, but lately I've been liking them. But I always yeah. try to get, like, real low on that IBU scale. Yeah, I know. Same. Like, uh, Lordell brought home a beer one time that the IBU was, like, an 80. That's bitterness units, right? Yeah. 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 And <laughs> I was like, mm, this is delicious. I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah. you so much for this beer. Uh, but. When I pick my IPAs, I try to look for, uh, I don't like really double IPAs. I don't know if you know what that is. Mm-hmm. So it has the double, like twice the amount of hops. So it must be real bitter. It's like real bitter and hoppy. And it gives you that burp that I'm going through right now. But now, if if I have one that's too hoppy, it feels like I'm like um, forming a a bread loaf in my stomach. <laughs> like I don't know what's going on with it when it's too hot. I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, no, I know, I know exactly what you mean. And that's, and that's what like kind of drew me away from IPAs when I first started drinking IPAs. Because yeah. uh, I just did not like the, the hoppiness, the bitterness yeah. and stuff. And then, you know, as a form of domestication, you start liking things that taste bad, like black coffee and IPAs and, you know, things like that. So It's funny you said black coffee. I mean, that's yeah. delicious. I don't know why. Yeah, like yeah but when you were a kid, did you like black coffee? I'm not going to ask you that question because it's probably a yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't like black coffee at first, and then I started actually drinking more black coffee. And I don't like all coffee black because there's a lot of really crappy coffee out there that when it's black, it's really bitter, and it's like, it just doesn't do it for me. But if it's like a very robust, full coffee – Kind of like a IPA, right? Like not all IPAs taste the same. Right. Not all of them are good, but if it's a really good, like robust, flavorful coffee, I will drink it black. Did you drink no. coffee as a kid? I did not. I didn't drink coffee until until I moved up here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's only been a couple of years that I've actually been drinking coffee. So you see, like Olivia's twelve. She drinks coffee. She's been drinking it for a while. And like I told no you, no one called the cops on John. I literally had coffee milk in bottles growing up. Coffee milk was that? It's coffee mixed with milk in a baby bottle, and they add sugar to it. So like coffee's been a part of me for as long as I've been alive. Isn't that isn't that like illegal? I don't think so. No. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. That might be a little no. like <laughs> coffee forever. I don't know what I'd do without coffee. Yeah, I I uh, I'm definitely to the point now where I don't have the addictive personality to where I have to have coffee. And I you know even when I was a like a s- cigarette smoker uh, back in my early twenties, uh, it it wasn't like I was addicted to it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I could. I could quit cold turkey. I just enjoyed the habit and enjoyed smoking. And the same thing with coffee. Now, now I don't enjoy smoking. Just throwing it out there if you guys wonder. I do not smoke anymore. I think it's a disgusting habit. I can't believe I did it for however <laughs> long I did do it. Right, but everyone goes through that phase. Agreed. I, I, I smoked, too, for yeah. probably a good 15 years. And then, yeah. you know, you start off with, like, menthols or something super easy. Oof. And then, then 
then the next thing you know, you're smoking hundreds of marble reds, mm. unfiltered or lucky strikes, unfiltered or something Capri like that. Capri 100s for me, man. They were Don't like know what some, that is. It was like a grandma cigarette. That was is that the white? Yeah, they were white box, the super skinny ones. Yeah, they were about eight inches long each cigarette, and yeah, we I think oh. we smoked a whole carton in the woods till we all got sick. Just oh my go. gosh, yeah. that's that's terrible. I remember this is this is really bad influence for the younger generation out there. But I remember when I was probably Charles' age, and I was living in Tennessee, and uh, I don't know how we got a hold of cigarettes, but we would go in the basements we had. In the apartments that we lived, uh, they had the little basement underground for tornadoes Yeah, that you would go hide under the house in case of tornado. Well, we'd go under there and smoke cigarettes as a kid. And I remember the day that my parents found out that we were smoking cigarettes because the maintenance guy drove past and saw us dry, like getting underneath there. Bust. He's like, what y'all doing down here? And like, oh, we're just, we're nothing, nothing. He's like, are y'all smoking cigarettes? And I was like, crap, man. I went home. My parents were furious. I think I was like maybe 10, 11 years old, right? But like I was saying, like the, the cigarette thing is like, I didn't, I didn't enjoy coffee at first, but now, now I'm like, I love it, man. Yeah. You know, gotta just, have it. You gotta, I gotta have it. It's not like I can't, I gotta have it, but. I think it's the flavor that wakes me up more than the coffee because I could drink coffee or a, a bang, probably, you know, the nectar of the gods bang. Yeah, for you, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then I could just go straight to sleep. Like, mm. caffeine does absolutely nothing to me. That's why, like, before we roll, sometimes I'm like, man, I kind of just want to bang right now. I'll, dr- I'll bang, I'll bang a bang and then <laughs> get on the mat. <laughs> I drink a cup of coffee every time before class. Really? Yeah. Black, obviously. Yep. Nope. What's your what, so when it comes to coffee, what is your your coffee of choice? Do you have like a specific manufacturer or? Nope, not anymore. Not since they came out with Cure Eggs. So you know, oh my I gosh. use those. I don't really like them, but they're convenient. Yeah. Um, I much prefer a pot of coffee. And if yeah. if I had to pick my favorite, it's a uh, community coffee, dark roast. Which com- is that like? It's like a is brand. it a, is it like community as in someone else made it and you just pour the cup? No, it's called community <laughs> coffee. They, they make it and sell it in Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a there, that's the nice thing about living in the Pacific Northwest is, like, microbrews are huge out here, right? So you get a lot of good beers, and then coffee's huge out here also. So you get a lot of good coffees well, also. A tidbit of information for people that aren't from around here: you cannot actually get drip coffee at most coffee stands in Washington. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, they don't do drip. Uh, you know, Most of it is espresso. Yeah. Uh, what do they call that nasty thing? That I think it's an Americana. It's yeah, like, Americana. Yeah, it's yeah. like three shots, four shots of espresso yeah. in water. Yeah, I used to try to get a coffee, and they were like, well, the best we could do is an Americana. And I was like, this is horrible. Americano, not mm. Americana. Yeah, whatever. We're, we're translating into <laughs> shit. <laughs> so you're getting tapped out while you're trying to order coffee. <laughs> so. All right. L- all right. Let's move on to some uh, some current jiu-jitsu talk. So where where do you feel like your game's at right now? I man, that's a good question because we've been doing a lot of review lately in class. And it's it's like I think I know these things, right? And then and then we get into class and they're like, "Okay, so we're going to do a Toriando pass." I'm like, Psh, "Easy. Love Toriando pass. It's great. It's probably one of my one of my favorite pieces." And then we start reviewing it, and I was like, I have no idea how to do a Toriando <laughs> pass. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, I love, I love guard pass. Guard pass is probably passing someone's guard is probably one of my favorite things to do because I like the challenge and the puzzle, trying to figure it out, and like the real time uh, feedback that you get. Right, if you make the wrong move, either you're getting swept or they're just going to retain their guard. Right. So I really enjoy open like p- trying to pass someone's guard. And it, and it's very rewarding when you do pass someone's guard, especially if it's a good back and forth the whole time. You know what I mean? And so we've been doing a lot of guard passing and stuff lately, and I thought I was more comfortable with it, but the but I don't know. I feel I feel like the well, I mean, I guess that's jujitsu. But what I'm gonna say is, I feel like the deeper we go, the less I know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. We we go over the Toriando pass, and I'm like, man, I I, don't, I know the Toriando pass. This feels pretty good. But then we start getting deeper into it, and then the, the little nuances of it. And then I try to put it in real time on, on someone, and it's it doesn't work. A little or, different. Yeah, it's a little different. But in live roles, we, it, I, I guess you could say it's because we know that everyone knows what we're working on. Right. Right. So if you're doing, like, positional sparring, 
you know that they're gonna go for a Toriando. You know that they're gonna go for a leg like a drag leg drag or whatever you're gonna do. So I feel like that's probably why I wasn't having as much success this last week with guard passing because we were working hard and got guard passing. Well, that you know and I think uh, the sparring you're talking about, it was also we could only pass. Yeah. So they knew we couldn't submit. Right. So they, bottom we guy could threat could, anything. Yeah. You know? Bottom guy could submit or sweep. Top guy was just trying to pass. So yeah. not, not having that threat of a submission, I think, made it a, a lot, lot tougher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I agree with that. And and it makes you. As the person trying to pass the guard, it makes you have to slow down and really think about yep. how are you going to do this because, you know, I can't I can't threaten, like if someone puts their feet on my hips, I can't threaten a straight ankle lock. Or if someone puts their arm up, I can't threaten to go for an arm bar or like a flying Kimura or whatever. So it really makes you slow down and look at what's going on and get more feedback to yourself Right. Like now I know that I'm not as good at guard passing as I thought I was, because when you break it down to just simply passing the guard, a lot of your tools are are kind of gone that you use to help uh, get you past their guard, whether it's a submission uh, threat or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when it's just get past their legs into side control or into mount or something like that neon belly then then it's a big then it's a big eye opener like man i should probably work on this <laughs> i feel the same way absolutely yeah. how, how's it how wh- how do you feel like your guard or your game's been lately what what, what have you been working on that's that's a been uh, a little bit of an eye opener well I, I think the same stuff like the you know I, my biggest weakness is probably passing yeah for sure yeah and on that toriando specifically um and i was curious i don't know if if people that have shoulder issues have a problem with that pass because you know you kind of get low and you lean in with your shoulder and then you grab the leg and you're and you're sliding it out. Yeah, that that's uncomfortable. I don't know if that's just me because I have shoulder issues or like what, if that's what, it, what what would you say is uncomfortable about it? Probably leaning in and putting that shoulder down, and then you know grabbing that leg and pushing it out. So the, so kind of like the the passing of the leg as you yeah, put the pressure. Yeah. I'm not used to putting that much on that shoulder. Like, is it, you almost have you tried the other side on there? Well, you know, that's going to my left. I mean, you know, we'll see. I know, but if it's uncomfortable well, on your right. Well, what I was going to say and something that helped. And uh, I think I told you I figured it out like midway through was changing my grip. I, I was grabbing too much uh, inside the leg for that pass. Uh-huh. And then when I moved it outside, like by the knee, you could actually grip it. And then it was easier to, to punch it through, punch it through. Yeah. And that actually helped a lot. Once I figured that little piece out. Big eye opener. Yeah, I got that cue during it too, and uh, it was an eye opener because you know, the coach ca- coach George came over and he's like, "Hey, you could grab the inside of the leg; it makes it a little bit harder, or you could grab on the outside of the leg, and it's just a more efficient grip because your hand's already there, so it's easier to punch through yeah. instead of having your hands backwards and pulling right. So you're not as strong pulling as you are with pushing yeah. with your arms. So I think that actually know? helped my shoulder. Oh, okay. It like, so that might it, yeah, because it, it like put it put it probably put it in a better position. Yeah, so it felt like I was more just locking my yeah. arm and pushing than having to like torque it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I was like, hmm. you know, I tried to steal that now. Yeah. I try to remember it. We'll see how that goes. Do you when when you're sh- when because you've had a, quite a few injuries in your life, not just from right. jujitsu, but like, what do you what do you do when s- something starts aching? Because like, if you guys don't know, we always talk about it. But John's a little bit older; he's in his yeah. early forties. Carry ibuprofen in the truck. You carry <laughs> <laughs> after practice. He's just eating. Yeah, like I normally like immediately get in my truck and swallow a couple. But do you do like real time? Uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? Real time adjustments. Yeah, like yeah. When, I mean, when you see, like I'll skip some, like the one warm up. Well, like there's one thing we do in warm up. I'll skip every time. Like I'm just not even bothering. Yeah, the, the push Grammy push roll. ups now. I you know I'll do the push ups on my knees instead of the way I used to do them. Yeah, you know. Those are do the kind of do you feel I like make. you're having more options now the longer that we're doing it? Like, are you figuring things out more on your own, or are you just kind of avoiding things because of injuries? No, I don't. I don't really avoid anything. I'll be you know more aware. Like if someone's trying to, uh, if they're sliding my arms up really high and trying to isolate my shoulder, I'll tap a little sooner. You know, like I'm just more aware of it. 
Yeah. Because I used to fight through it more, but then I'd be in pain for days <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> You're like, like walking like, in the house looking like Yeah, now I'm like, I'm just gonna tap if they if they get that high up with it. I'm not I'm not even gonna attempt to fight that anymore. Yeah. I know I know what you're, I know how you feel, man. I've been I've been uh putting myself in bad positions on purpose a lot lately. And the main position that I love letting people get into is for a mounted triangle. Because I'll free, so what I like to do, once again, putting my game out there, is I'll let people feel comfortable like they can get to high mount because I have a very strong bridge because I have very strong hips. And uh, so when they get into high mount, Derek Derek was probably the closest person to kind of countering it, but they'll get to high mount and they'll start trying to sink in that that triangle. And I will free my right arm on purpose so they think that they're getting it. And then I'll grab pant and bridge and then punch. Oh, just punch them up? Just punch them straight off of me pretty much, right? And so, and then I'm in, I can go attack or try to get get in a better position. Um, But I was pretty proud of myself. What was it? Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday or Thursday. uh, I was rolling with Professor and... uh, he was trying to get in a high mount, and it, I it, like he obviously he's a black belt, right? But I felt like I was defending myself pretty right. good like, <laughs> during it. Like I was like, oh, I'm doing the right things. I'm doing the right things, Sick. and I didn't get tapped, and that's a victory to me, right? Uh, just good scrambles and and whatnot it right. is is you know is always fun. So, but I was I was I was defending him going high mount in what I thought was a very good, you know, it's like a little victory for me. So, you ever have those in the middle of a roll and you're just yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah, you're like that was a victory. Like, yeah. like in the middle of it, you're like that roll's not over. You still got like three and a half minutes. But you're yeah. like, but you're like sl- in your head, you're like giving yourself a high five. Like, yeah, my game's getting better. Like I can tell. Like even when you saw I got close to Cody. Cody, I hope you hear this. I was so close. Oh my gosh, so close. I would, I would love to go over that real quick. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so we were doing positional sparring, right? And it was passing the guard, and we're doing King of the Hill. And I feel I feel kind of bad because I, I said it to, to John, and John doesn't <laughs> like when people give him coaching cues because the other person can hear it. And this is a prime example of what he talks about. <laughs> so Cody goes to shoot in, and uh, he's, John sinks in a guillotine super quick, and it's, like, right there. And that's what I mean by games getting better. Like, I didn't even think about it. Like, yeah, it, just, just it was just it. there, right? Yeah. And so John s- sinks in this guillotine, and I was like, ooh. I was like, that's that's close. And you could tell it was close because Cody stopped. Yeah. He stopped moving and he was trying to free his leg because John Locked John secured his, his, his left leg, right? So John had him in half with the guillotine. And I was like, John, high elbow. And so this, I do I don't even think I got high elbow out of my mouth completely. And Cody's left knee flies up into just traps John's right arm. And we all, the whole class just starts laughing. <laughs> Professor looks at me. He's like, well, it looks like that stopped that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, and that, that's, that's, that was 100% the moment I realized that like, Cody was threatened to just, just maybe yeah. just. A, and that still slightest. felt like a yeah. victory to that's me. That's a victory. Because I didn't have to yeah. think about it. I just naturally went to the guillotine. But you're right. I, I, I was thinking when I was there and I was like, what am I missing to finish this? And it was getting that elbow up. But I had to think through it and. Uh, just about the time I was thinking through it's when you said it. Oh, it as soon as you said it, it was done. I was, I was like, like it. When, he, when he slammed <laughs> his knee into the, your arm, uh, he didn't slam, but, you know, he secured that arm. I I, I felt bad, man. I was yeah. like, oh, that could have been it. It done. still felt good. I was like, oh, well, finally, at least, at least he had to pause yeah. for a second. Anytime I, <laughs> I spar with someone and I don't get tapped, it's a victory for me. Or yeah. even if I get tapped, but I don't let that happen again. For X amount of time, to me, it's a victory. Also, I don't mind getting like we talk about. Like, I don't mind getting tapped, yeah. uh, it, because it's just a learning experience. But if I do get tapped by something, I truly try to not ever put myself in that position again. I try to be as uh, cognitive of it as co- cognitive, yeah. yeah, of it as as much as possible for the rest of my roles. So that's like uh, for a while there. Man, this this IPA is giving me the burps. <laughs> For a while there, I was catching people left and right with the, with the Dars. Yeah. Right. And now I can't catch anyone with the Dars because everyone knows exactly what's going on. Right when I go for that Dars, so everyone's game is improving. Also, I should know the Dars better since I went to that seminar, but yeah. I just don't. Well, now, now you were blinded the entire time, you know. So that's true. <laughs> 
So how how are, how are the girls like in jujitsu? How how are the kids? Oh, uh, the the kids are interesting. Um, they've been going probably a little over a year now. I think. Uh, yeah, I think for the kids, for me anyway, it, it's hard to keep them motivated. Yeah, um, they're very reward motivated, I guess. Yeah, um, and not reward in a sense of like reward as in belt. Like actual physical belt promotions, right, but right. but a little bit of recognition, right? Like any kid wants recognition. Charles yeah. Charles comes to me all the time, and he's like, he 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 just wants either verbal or some sort of affirmation, knowing that he's doing a good job, and it's it's natural. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think um, I mean, I don't, the the children have a lot more um belts in between, right? I, I, they just have a lot more than the adults, and I I think that's to help keep them motivated as well. Yeah. And w- originally, when I started bringing kids, I was bringing um, four, four or five to every class. Yeah, you had a whole gang with you, the Brady Bunch. Yeah, and they went pretty regular for you know seven, eight months, and uh, they just kind of. I think the last when they prepared for that last tournament, and the kids prepared for it, and I think they did some um, striping shortly thereafter, or right before it. For those. For those that didn't get it, it hit them kind of hard. Like, yeah. you know, I think it had been a couple months since they, they had got a stripe, and most of them quit after that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my kids, they're on the fence if they're going to continue to go or not. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a battle to get Charles to go every yeah. time. Because, like any kid, it's, I don't know, it puts them in uncomfortable, like, situations. Right. And it's it's to help build them as a human being, right? In 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 our eyes, as the parent, like yeah, I want to put you in that position that you're uncomfortable with because it's just going to make you get better. Yeah, in if life. you're ever really uncomfortable, yeah, you'll it, know like it, how to handle it. Exactly. <laughs> so, but it's it's a struggle to to get Charles to go every time until he's in the class and he's having fun and whatnot. But that can only last so long. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Before Charles is going to be like, uh, am I doing good? Yeah. What am I sure. doing wrong? How come I haven't been getting anything or whatnot? And it's it's and especially when you see other kids that have more stripes or a colored belt or something like that or has some sort of recognition and then it's it's in the kids' mindset, in their in their brain they're thinking, Why is that kid better? That kid's not better than me. I think I'm good kid too. Am I not good? If anybody heard that barking, that's my uh, frog petunia. So don't worry about it. <laughs> French bulldog and uh, pug. Yep. Right. Yeah, and I think when the kids have that concern or conversation, and I mean for me, like it, it's even hard to tell Olivia. You know, like it'll happen in time. You just got to keep going, stay right. motivated. You know. I mean, hell, the adults are s- sometimes in the same boat, right? Like, right. We yeah. don't. We don't know what's going on. We just keep going. We keep working out. Keep trying. Right trying to progress it's hard to tell the kid to enjoy the grind you <laughs> yeah, know what i mean yeah, like, like we're doing our own struggle with the grind yeah you know? like, right we, what do you every, tell him i feel you kid yeah <laughs> you know and, and that's the thing right is when you're going through and that's why i feel like it's so strong for a family to do something like jujitsu together because you are both experiencing the same trials and tribulations right. and struggles and growth as a person right so you guys can relate to each other very much right like so Lordell has been wanting to do jujitsu, and she talks about going to hybrid. And I'm like, babe, if you want to go to hybrid, I support you, right? It's not a bad gym. I have no ill will towards them or anything. But I want you to go to Pacific Northwest, not only because I go there, but because we can do it together. We can experience it together. Right. Right. We can grow together in this, in this you know. And I think it's it's something very, very good for a relationship, whether it's with your kids or with your significant other, to go through something like that. And then also because, say, say someone got a little upset in the car ride over, you're like, <laughs> just wait until open mat. Just wait until. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll resolve it there. Yeah, it's funny, too, because, um, you know, it's just I, I can see it like, uh, you know, talking to Olivia. She's like, man, I just had a really hard time with that class. It was so much stuff. I have a hard time remembering it and focusing. And I'm like, girl, I'm I'm 41 years old. I feel the exact same way. Yeah, like, yeah it doesn't it, change. It doesn't change, yeah. right? Like it's uh, it's how you adapt to yeah, it, pretty much. Right. Yep. Yeah, because it, it's it's hard it's hard to tell 
Charles to stick with it or don't give up when when they feel like they're not doing good at it, right? Because they a lot of kids, especially nowadays, are very they want that instant gratification of of I'm doing good. And a lot of kids don't really want to go through the hard times. And jujitsu is not easy. It's not no. easy for anyone. You know, it, it's easier for some people, but f- I don't care who you are. It's not. It's not easy. And for kids, especially nowadays, with a lot of participation medals, or <laughs> you know, everyone gets something when when it comes to like a martial art, like, no, I'm sorry, if you're not performing, you're not going to get anything. Right. You know, and it, it, it's hard to keep a kid motivated when, when you're their parent and you're like, look, no, you're doing good. You're doing great. Like, but you're just not there yet. Like you got to keep trying, you know, and in their eyes, they're trying their hardest. Like Charles yep. tells me all the time, I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying my hardest. I'm like, I understand that man, but you just got to keep trying. Like, I know it sucks. I know it's not the funnest thing in the world, but when you do earn it, it is so much more satisfying. Yep. It is so much more rewarding as a person when you have put your blood, sweat, and tears into something and you get it. Yeah, when you've earned it. When you've earned it, you know. Yep. But kids don't understand that, right? When they get it, they're happy. But then they're like, two weeks later, okay, I need to do that again. <laughs> yeah, it's tough for sure. I guess we're going to have to have a kid on here one day and have a, a podcast with them and get there. Yeah, we got a couple good kids. I was, I was watching some of the kids in the competition class today roll, and I was like, man, these kids, are gonna dis- these kids would destroy me, man. Like, holy crap. They're so good. They're going to be so much better when they're older, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's why That's why I really want Charles to stick with it, too, because Charles is a very lengthy person or kid. So he has very long arms and legs, and he has really good mobility, like all kids. So if he sticks with it, I think he could be very good at it, you know, but we'll see. I told him if he he wants to try excuse me, beers hitting him. He beers hitting me. He wants to try a different sport and I'm okay with him trying a different sport, but I tell him all the time you you have to show your mom and I that you're you're dedicated to something even if it's not the funnest thing in the world because I'll tell you right now, any sport you want to try, there's going to be times when it's not fun. Right. And we're not going to switch you just because it's at a port, uh, a part in the sport where it's not fun. Yeah. You know, so you you show us that you're dedicated to it, that you're sticking through it, even through the not so fun times, and then we'll talk about putting you in something that you actually want to do. But we need to see that dedication. You know, that do, that I don't know. Do you get worried about burnout with them, like when school starts? Uh not not so much because we don't. We don't have a lot of things planned. Like, Lord and I are the busy ones. Charles is usually just along for the ride. So he's not really into anything else besides jiu-jitsu, so which is two times a week for him. So I th- we did we did run into it a little bit last year when he'd, like, have a hard day at school or something, or he just, you know, kids get in those moods where they just don't want to really do anything. They're not motivated. That was probably the hardest time that we found to get him motivated to go do it. But once again, once he gets there, he's Good his friends. Go. Like he has, he doesn't call them his friends, but they're laughing, they're joking, you know, they're having fun in class, and they're they're learning. So I don't, I don't, I don't find not yet at least him getting burnt out on it. I just don't think he wants to do it just because he'd rather just sit at home and not right. do anything. What about you? You feel like the because I know your girls are in cheer, they're in jujitsu. Yeah, I like, worry about it because they go. Um, you know, jujitsu, and then directly after that, they go to yeah, they're busy. cheerleading. Um, we don't generally – generally, our mornings start about 5 a.m. for everyone. My, earlier for me, but for the girls and Katie, it's about 5. And uh, we don't generally get home till about 8. That's crazy. That's, that's four or five nights a week. So I get worried that they're doing too much. You don't allow them to stay home by themselves when they – uh, I don't know if you want to put that on a podcast. No, I mean, Olivia's old enough, too, but um, she generally not. likes to go to Grandma's house. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a nice thing about you guys. You guys have your their grandparents right down the road. Uh, Lordo and I, we just have Charles just kind of stay at home when we can and 
kind of let him fend for himself a little bit. So hopefully that helps out in the long run. I mean, I don't have a problem with yeah. kids staying home. When I was growing up, we all stayed home by ourselves. Same. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a big deal at all. Yeah. I had a key to the house. I'd go get on the bus by myself in the morning. You know, no yeah, big deal. And, and the the big thing for for me is showing responsibility. And that kind of plays back into why he's in jiu-jitsu also is because someone's holding him accountable and holding him responsible for him and not only his actions but the other people around him so it helps him teach responsibility that's probably the biggest thing that he complains about the most about jujitsu is he's like yeah but if other kids are talking then i have to do push-ups with them yeah i'm like yeah (laughs) yeah it's a team you guys are a team members like it's your school you guys are all one person when it comes down to that you know you you have to you have to be willing to look over at someone and be like bro I need you to stop talking or you're going to make all of us do push-ups. And show I don't want to do that right show now. Show him that scene in Full Metal Jacket. There's a lot of scenes that <laughs> I would, do not want to show him, but are you talking about the, the, the soap? The oh, soap. my gosh. What is that For What is that called Gomer, again? Gomer Powell that kept messing up and Ugh. the whole class would have to do the push-ups. with a bar or so. Yeah, yeah. Sock, was it a sock party? Is yeah. it what it was called? Yeah. It was a pillowcase party or yeah. something like that. Oh, my gosh. That yeah, so that rough. scene was <laughs> brutal. Never saw that in the military, though. Thank baby Jesus. So, so changing gears, how are you liking the no gi? You you finally got to go to Man, go to a couple now. Let me tell you, I absolutely love no gi. When we first started jujitsu, I was all about gi. I I wanted like nothing to do with no gi, and we talk about it a little bit here and there about the differences to us f- between gi and no gi. But I absolutely love no gi, man. I don't know what it is about it. I enjoy. It's it's gonna sound weird. I enjoy when we're both like sweating, grinding through it. Like we're you really fighting for it. There's no there's no there's no grips that they can get advantage of with. I get away with more for sure. Yeah, like I can slide out of more because I'm sweating like a pig. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I enjoy. Right. I feel I feel like one of our buddies, Dom. He he left our school and moved. He's he's active duty Navy, but he moved over to Georgia. Um, and we we're talking about it. he's like I could be more dangerous. Like I could be a little bit more you know try try scarier things and not have to worry about the repercussions so much. And I believe Dom just got first place gi and no gi in yeah, his Yeah, he was uh, doing good, man. He was yeah. killing it. Yeah. And so I feel I feel like gi is more freeing or uh no gi is more freeing and you know, I'm I'm a peacock. Yeah, let me fly and, and some no gi, you know. And the rest a little bit of the wrestling that I have in my background, you know, so um, but to me, it's it's more rewarding to sink in a good choke or a good arm bar or something because you know that it was is because y- you your technique was well, maybe not always, but you're a little bit more aware because they're p- easier to get out of it. So how you like a nogi? Oh, I like it a lot because I feel like um, it's less wear and tear on my grips, my fingers. They don't hurt yeah. as much. Yeah. Um, I would say it hurts my game more. Because why would I, you say that? Because I like tying people up and slowing yeah. them down with the gi. You know, that's that's like part of my game. So when I don't have that option, I'm I'm a little more limited. But I do like that. Uh, like I said, I can try. I can be a little bit riskier because I can get out of more stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I like sweat. It. Sweat plays into it, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Any um, where do you go when you're trying to look up for tips, or maybe you're trying to work on your game and you need to see it again? So we we were talking about this before the podcast. I think it was actually a couple of days ago. Like, uh, as newer white belts, we're not we're not. Even, I wouldn't even say we're newer white belts, but we're still white belts. So there's still a lot of information that we're seeking out there. And where do John and I go to to get our information? Because there's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of BS on the internet, and there's a lot of good stuff. And it, being able to decipher it, especially as a white belt or as someone brand new to jujitsu that are looking for information what where I go to is I started off on YouTube and one of my biggest influences outside of our school is a third degree black belt named Roy Dean and he's a black belt under Roy Harris and their content what got me was their their belt demonstration videos Right. So someone's getting promoted to purple belt or someone's getting promoted to black belt. And they're like they're they're demonstrating the moves that they're supposed to know. And then they're all open sparring. And that's probably the biggest place that I go for content to to learn outside of the school is Roy Dean. 
If you guys have never heard of him, oh man, John and I talk about how mm-hmm. the quality of his content. And that's what grabs you. It's because his his videos are high quality. Like Very high they're, quality. Yeah. They're really nice. They sound good. It doesn't sound like he's in a big empty room or uh, it's not like it's getting filmed on a cell phone. Like it's like like professional yeah, film. It's, it's fantastic. You know. And then his book and everything like that is really good. Uh, so that's probably my number one. And then there's like Chewy Jiu-Jitsu. He also runs a podcast also. Uh, Keenan Cornelius. He puts out a lot of stuff out there about like lapel guard and whatnot. Who else? Instagram. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on Instagram, but you got to be a, you got to be wary of when you go on social media because anyone can put something out. Black Label. Black Label. Yeah, there we go. That was another one. Black Label Jiu Jitsu Malky. I forgot what his last name was, but he has the Heisengard. I've been wanting to buy that DV set, DVD set. Someone talk. Uh, I think it was Blaine was talking about it in in Japan when we were out there, but. Or maybe it was Roy Harris. I remember hearing someone talk about it. But the the difference is in what guard you play for each belt level. And they talk about like white belt. You you learn close guard. Like you try to learn as much stuff from close guard. Like playing playing from your close guard. Blue belt. You're you're like I want spider guard. I want lapel guard. I want. I think Professor Bella was Hiva. using that butterfly guard on you in that no gi. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I was I, watching. I was like, I like, I like when people go butterfly, it. and I'll go over that in a second. <laughs> uh, uh, but so, and then when you're your purple brown belt, you know you're you you kind of you find your guard that you play, whether it's you know you're a big De La Hiva guy or sit up guard or lasso or whatever it is. But then when you get back to black belt, you go back to close guard because you realize how good you, close guard is, and Heisen guard is from the close guard. Hmm. So I've been I've been wanting to watch that because if 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 it's effective, I, I want to. I want to pull it out, but I'm never in my close guard. I never have anyone in my guard. I'm usually half guard or in mount or something yep. like that. So, but uh, what about you, John? Where where do you usually go? All right. So this is the way it breaks down for me. So I think if you're a newer white belt, I think the best one you can go to, or it helped me out immensely, was um the Gracie University online. Oh yeah. Um, it's just uh both brothers. They go step by step. And they basically go over the position, and uh, then they'll even stop, and you the like the content pauses so you can practice with a partner. If you yeah. don't have a partner, then they show you how to do it by yourself, and uh, that helped me out a lot, like a lot. I think if you're uh, been doing it a little bit longer, then I think Roy Dean is exceptional. That's like my number two. Yeah, and um, I think he just speaks really well and. When he's given the lesson, it's almost like he's talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's really easy to understand. And I also like uh, going to Chewy's site. I went there a lot. I went uh, his his YouTube channel or the YouTube channel. Uh, I looked a lot there, and th- those are the mainly the ones I go to. And I think um, I've neglected the Gracie one a little bit lately, but I'm gonna go back into that one. Yeah, I came into the house downstairs. Looks like I got the mats mm-hmm. laid out. Get some sparring in there. Lordell and I were cleaning the garage today, and she saw the mats in, in the garage. She said, can we get rid of those mats? I'm like, are you uh, out your mind, girl? Not. <laughs> no, we're not getting rid of those mats. Like, those are good wrestling, like, in jiu-jitsu mats. What I want to do in the next one, the next house is I want to have in the garage a little sparring area so Charles and I could practice. Or if you come over, I could beat you up for a little bit, and then we could do a podcast and talk about how I beat you up. But really, you'll probably just be stalemating. No, I think I found your kryptonite now. What's that? Your neck. I Bro, just, my neck is killing me I right now. Go for the neck, and you'll be all John. Right. John almost broke my neck in half. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even touch his neck. He did not. He did not actually <laughs> touch my neck with his hands, but he was. We were doing that positional sparring this last week, and I was sitting up. We were. I was doing sit up guard, and John kind of like just pushes my head down. And then he puts all of his body weight on my head to take my back. And as he's sprawled out, going around my body. I think I was trying to slide, or kind of like slide on your back to get around you. I don't know. Whatever it was, it felt like a ton of bricks on the <laughs> back of my head. And as he, I remember right when it happens, because he was probably, I don't know, s- seven, eight o'clock on my body. And all that pressure forward just cracked my neck like three or four times. And then he, he, I just gave up my back because I was in so much pain. 
And I don't even think John fully sank in the rear naked choke, nope. and I was tapping, dude. I was like, my neck is killing me. It was to the point where I got back in line, and I had to, like, pause for a second, like, <laughs> <laughs> but Pure it, luck, pure luck. Yeah, but it, it it wasn't bad enough to the point where I had to stop for that. Yeah, night. I noticed you did a couple rolls after that. Oh, so. But I noticed you did a couple rolls. It, it had to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. Oh, no, it it was... It wasn't unbearable. Like it's still really tender right now. When I get in my car, if I like tap my head on the on the headrail when I'm getting in the car, I'm like, hoo, hoo. <laughs> like I whimper a little bit. But so I think uh, let's talk about some stuff we'll do going forward. I think we're gonna go ahead and get that UFC pass, and we'll start watching some um, some fights. Yeah. So UFC has the UFC fight pass. Come to find out, it's like ten bucks a month. That's it. Ten dollars. Huh. And they have. Kasai Pro, the Kasai series, which is all submission only grappling. They have a whole bunch of grappling, wrestling, other fight promotions for like UFC. They have the full pride. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like all the old pride fights, like archived. Yeah, all the archived pride fights. And it's just, it, it, to me, I was like, $10 a month, that's a steal. And then you get all the pre, I believe you get the prelim fights, you get all the fight nights for the UFC. You still have to order pay-per-views, but everything leading up to when, before the pay-per-view starts, you get. And so John and I are going to invest in that. And then we plan on doing a podcast while watching it. That should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like an MMA show guest. <laughs> <laughs> My significant other, Katie, since I'm, I'm giving her a plug here. There we go. Now Katie can stop yelling at yes. us. Uh, I don't think she likes that. I'm probably spending more on content, like um, between Roy Dean, Gracie University, like all this stuff, than my actual membership a month to go practice jiu-jitsu. Is it really that much now? Well, I mean, uh, Gracie's now 35 bucks a month for what I'm signed up for. It's, uh, t- I want to say 25 for Roy Dean. So what can people expect with that? Going back to that, Gracie, like, what can they expect real quick? Like, go over what it is and why do you use it? Cause I I don't, you didn't, you kind of just, like, briefly just said brand new people use it, but why? Well, because it's, it's well, the, the content you get from the beginning is if you are a brand new white belt. It goes through the Gracie combatives. So it basically, the, I mean, the first lesson is, like, trap and roll. That's what they're teaching you, how to trap and roll. They'll go through Americana, Camoras. They'll go through Hooks. They'll go through just uh, they'll go through passing guard, but basically everything a white belt needs. If you do the Gracie combatives, so they kind of do a blue belt online, right? Um, you can get your blue belt by doing this Gracie University online. The blue belt's a little different than what you would get in a normal jujitsu academy. Basically, you go through all the Gracie combatives. You can actually record yourself and send it to them, and they'll critique you. Once you've done all the Gracie combatives and you think you have a firm understanding of them, they will. you can go to the nearest Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy from where you live, and you can test with an instructor there. If you pass the test with the instructor, you'll get your blue belt. Sounds pretty legit. Yeah. For those out there that listen that don't have a school around you or something like that, that's a, that's a great it's a alternative. Great way to, it's a great way to learn. Yeah, it's an awesome way to learn because you're still learning real jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. But you're just doing it by yourself. Or if you want to grab a friend and just split the cost, you're still learning like real Gracie jiu-jitsu that's going to help you out in the long run. Yeah, too. and you can actually open a – so if you don't have a gym near you, you can open a Gracie garage. So you need to – either be a paid member doing the online or buy their dvd set you also have to have um i want to say 30 by 30 mat space that you can have you need to have a picture of helio gracie on the wall you basically record all this you send it to them if they approve you you become a gracie garage you'll show up on their map on their website and anyone that's in your area that wants to practice will see you and basically you guys meet up and you go over the lessons yeah it's actually pretty legit. We, when the school first opened up, we did the Gracie Academy. That's stuff. what we were doing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's why John and I had such a, like a, a love for, for the basics when we first started. Now that we've been doing it for a while, I definitely enjoy the more complicated things. But I wish it was broken. I wish we could break it down into, uh, more steps. I guess you could say, 
in a sense of, okay, we're going to do this. Now drill this for four or five times. Okay, now we're going to go to the next step. Now we're adding this, and now we're doing this. All right, now go do that four or five times. Okay, now that we've done those two things, let's do the third thing. You know what I mean? To where we drill each step. Because we do, sometimes you do a lot of, you do some pretty interesting things, but you get lost in the weeds. Yeah, for you sure. Know? You get lost in the in the fluff or what the squirrels, you know. And that's that's a big thing for me, and I know a lot of people, is you'll be going over this super sick move. And it does not not only at our academy, because it happens at our academy every once in a while. Not all the time. Not not bashing our school or anything like that. But, you know, there are people, people are people. They get inside tangents or they have a, a brain fart or whatever. But other places I've been to where you'll be going over a move and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, how did I end up here? <laughs> like, what, what what were you doing again? Like, yeah. you know, and then it's like, anyone have any questions? Like, uh, no, I guess I'll just no, get back I'm to a, Yeah, I'm going to watch and see what everyone else yeah, is doing. Yeah, I've no. definitely <laughs> been in those moments where it's like, i got like two sleeve grips. I'm like, no one else is grabbing sleeves. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So. But what what else do we got planned on going on? We're doing the fight pass. What else are we going to be doing? We got some big things going on, big dog things. Well, we don't want to give away too much. I know we're going to have some T-shirts coming in soon. That's right, baby. We're That'll be nice. T-shirts. That'll be nice. We'll give some of those away, definitely. For yeah, sure. I think I think the the plan is. Excuse me. Holy crap! The plan is is if you come on Elbows Type Podcast, if you are invited on to this magnificent show. That no one listens to besides a lot of people actually listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you get invited onto the show, we we want to show our appreciation for you spending your time with us. Uh, so we'll we'll give you some some merch or something like that, like a T-shirt or uh, a coaster or. Hopefully, something. we'll get some patches soon. Yeah, we really want to get patches. I've I've hit up some people for patches, but. They haven't got back to me, so I need to call. I need to. I need to get a hold of someone else to get the patches because we patches aren't going to be expensive. We're only going to do the little ETP. Yeah, the little ETP logo. That's what six six inch diameter. You know what I mean. So not not very big circle. So that's that's one thing that we got coming up. I and think we're going to look at a recording live in the in the future. So yeah. So I know I know I got to break John of his fear of being recorded, but. My goal is to have a live show while we do this, right? So having a YouTube channel or whatever it is, as we film it, it being live, and then people can ask real-time questions or, I would you love know. to get some questions if we can get some questions. Yeah, yeah. Segue to what you were talking so about earlier. If anybody wants to leave some questions, you know, put it on our social media and please. we'll answer them on the next podcast. Yeah, please, 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 please. We always are looking for feedback from you guys. And we don't have a huge following right now, but we do have some people that are very active when we talk to them in person or whether it's on social media, people sharing the podcast, people listening to the podcast. There are quite a few people that listen to the podcast, even though we're we're relatively new. Luckily, we have very good friends and family who who gets us out there. But if please, guys, ask us some questions. Like, uh, it doesn't have to be about technique or whatever. Like, what? W- give us some suggestions or tell us your stories or something we could talk about on the next episode. You know, that way we we get you guys kind of involved with it too. So, which would be, I think it'll be a lot more fun for other people to listen to when when they get, you know, hey, I'm I'm a brand new white belt. I'm having a hard time doing this what did you guys do in order to get past it or i have i have the white belt blues right i've been a white belt for (laughs) x amount of time how do you guys stay motivated to keep going what do you guys do to to learn grow which are you know anything you guys can think of because we've all been there right if you've been doing jujitsu for any amount of time you've had a question what a great question that would be when is being a white belt too long is there a time that you could possibly be one for two? I long? think I I don't think so. I mean, what if you're going on four years? I and you've been a and you've been regularly going. I I guess I, that would be interesting. I wonder if there's a certain point where someone just pulls you to the side and be like, man, this just isn't for you. I think, but that's the thing, right? What I was going to say is, I don't think there is too long for a white belt. Um, I don't think there's too long for a single belt. Yeah, I think. I think the reason that you're still there 
is because you're not ready for the next one. Ugh. Right. And the same thing with us. We've been we've been, I got I don't know what the time frame is that we're supposed to be white belts or uh, if there is a time frame or maybe we're just not getting something or whatever. Right. But we've been doing it for over a year now. Yeah. And it's and I don't mind hanging out being a white belt like it doesn't bother me i do think though if i hit like the you know two-year mark or three-year mark you I, might start tapping. i would probably be like um what so am I doing i'd wrong? be like just be honest with me should i just move on to something else <laughs> you know yeah, hit my yeah, hopeless yeah. cause yeah you know, just be honest yeah, yeah right it, and uh, having a firm understanding of what what which whether it's your professor or your coaches or having that internal uh look at yourself yeah you know, it's just it's just good to have the information so so you know, right? But I don't think I don't think there is coming from being a white belt. I don't think there. I don't want to be promoted to the next belt until one. I know I feel pretty comfortable that I'm going to be that belt, and then two, I don't want your professor to promote me if he doesn't truly feel like he's promoting me to because I deserve it. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. doesn't matter how long I'm a white belt if I'm not ready yet, then. Don't give it to me. Just say, "Hey, I I'm bet when you get this. promoted, you still wouldn't feel ready." I don't think anyone ever feels. That's ready what I'm for saying. Like, you'd be like, oh, "Here you go." Yeah. You know, here's the promotion. You'd be like, "Oh man, I don't know if I deserve this." I'm God, thank here. you so much. I've been waiting for this forever. <laughs> you put it on. You're like, everyone looks at you kind of sideways, like, mm. like, yeah, I'm coming for you. I'm All the rolls are extra hard that night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So, but those are just some of the things that we're thinking about doing. I would, I would really love to get more feedback on the podcast, just because. It's something that we truly enjoy doing, mm-hmm. man. Who would ever thought that just having a conversation over some beers and recording it would have been so fun? So we would love to get you guys some feedback. Um, if you have ideas for the shows, where you want us to record, if you guys are, if you guys want us to put a vlog out with it, so you guys can watch it on YouTube or something like that, we'll do that too. John and I, since like I said last time, since we're mobile now. We can we can oh, go nice. places, yeah. you know, and record. Like, it's hard to explain where we are right now because John's house is in the middle of the woods on top of a mountain, and it's beautiful, right? And then have to to have this as a background of a video while we do our podcast. It 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 would pull into full. It would put into <laughs> full perspective on what what it looks like and We're how nice it is. Surrounded by evergreens. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. So, but hey, I think I think that's pretty good, man. We're about an hour. It's yep. not bad. Not bad. So. We just wanted to put some content out there for you guys. We don't want we we realize the the listenership kind of goes down when 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 we're not giving you guys something to to listen to. So um, this was a definitely a good episode to kind of catch you guys up with on what we're thinking about, how's everything going, and it's a uh, I enjoy the ones that where it's just us two, just as much as the ones where it's everyone else. So because we get to drink beer, our ladies get together. They mind their own business. We mind ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, guys, once again, like we said earlier, please like our, uh, and subscribe to Elbow Sight Podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, on every everything you can think of for podcasts. Leave us a five-star review, comment, give us a review. Also, follow us on Instagram at Elbows Tight Pod on the Instagram. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Travis ETP. And then John doesn't even use his Instagram anymore. I so look at it, but it. I don't know what the name is. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you go to our elbows type podcast p- Instagram page, his is linked in there. John also has a Twitter that he you know regularly posts on. So sure. <laughs> 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 so hey guys, uh, also don't forget the Facebook page, all that stuff that we say every single time. I need to put this at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, you do. That way, people people will stop listening to it right away instead of until the end when we start plugging all the stuff. <laughs> So, hey guys, thanks again so much for listening to the episode. Uh, And I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, no oils checks Checks here. here. That's right, baby. No oil checks here. Later.